This presentation covers the installation and use of the Swordfish API emulator. I'll go over a brief overview of the SNES Swordfish specification, then dive into the Swordfish API emulator tool. I'll show how to set up the emulator the first time, then provide a few pointers to some useful tools for interacting with the emulator, followed by some pointers and links where you can go to find some more in-depth details. Swordfish is an extension to the Distributed Management Task Force Redfish specification, for simple and secure management of physical and software-defined data centers. Swordfish is a storage management protocol developed by the SNEA Scalable Storage Management Twig that adds capabilities for managing external storage and services. Like the protocol itself, the Swordfish emulator is built on top of the Redfish emulator. It provides a REST API and simulates a Swordfish system with sy multiple storage services. It is able to handle reading these simulated services but also allows for dynamic modifications through create, update, and delete operations as well. The source code for the emulator is hosted on GitHub and contains all the documentation and installation instructions, which I'll walk through here. The emulator itself is a Python application that can be customized locally for any special needs. Since it is written in Python, it should work well in Windows, Mac OS, or Linux systems, as long as there is a Python 3 runtime available. This video will just go through the basics of getting the emulator up and running, but if you'd like to see the various configuration options and learn more about the way the simulated resources are defined, the Redfish repo on GitHub has more details in the README file and more thorough documentation. In order to run the emulator, you will need Python 3.6 or above installed. It is recommended you also use a Python virtual environment when setting up the emulator, but that is not a strict requirement. For those not familiar with Python, a virtual environment is a way to isolate installed package files and the overall Python environment configuration to avoid conflicts with other Python-based package installations. So if you're installing Python solely for use with the emulator, you may not need to worry about setting up a virtual environment, but it's highly recommended. It does sound a little complicated at first, but as you'll see, there really isn't much to it, and I will show a script that will help get things set up. To get the emulator set up and running, there are really just a few easy steps. You will need to get the Redfish emulator code checked out locally, then you will need to get the Swordfish emulator code and copy over a few directories on top of the Redfish ones. Once all the code is in place, you can create a virtual environment if you wish to do so, install the required Python packages, and run the emulator. Now to show what this looks like, I am going to go to github slash dmtf slash redfish interface emulator. And you can download a zip file of the source. I'm just going to grab a copy the git URL into my clipboard and just do a git clone. And that will pull down the latest source code from the Redfish emulator. And then after that's in place, just go over to github.com slash SNEA. And one of the top repos listed there is the Swordfish API emulator. And just the same thing, um, we can take a look at the documentation, but I'm going to grab that URL and do another git clone. I'm using the command line. Uh, there are graphical tools available for all of this, so whatever you feel more comfortable with. If we take a look at the Redfish emulator, you can see that there are uh, all the source files there, um, nothing uh, you need to be too concerned about uh, unless you want to get into customizing some of this. You can switch over to the Swordfish API emulator, and there's not as much there, but you'll see there's uh, a couple of directories, the API emulator that's also in Redfish, and the resources folder that's uh, in both. So all that we need to do is copy over uh, each of those directories right on top of the other. Uh, so from the Swordfish API emulator code, copy the resources folder and put that into the Redfish files, and then copy over the API emulator. And that's all we have to do to get Swordfish enabled within that Redfish emulator. Uh, if I switch over now to the Redfish emulator, there's just a couple more steps I need to do. Uh, if you would like to set up a virtual environment, that's uh, the command for that is virtual environment. Um, and you just need to tell it what version of Python that you want to use. So I'm going to say Python equals Python 3. And <laughs> if I can type, 
And then you give it a name for the virtual environment. So you can have multiple virtual environments all within the same directory, so you can easily switch back and forth. I'm just going to call it the ENB. And that creates a folder within our directory called the ENB that has uh, various binaries and libraries and things like that. So now that we have the virtual environment, I am going to run the pip executable out of there. So VNB bin pip, and pip is the package installation manager for Python. We're going to tell it to install, and now the, the easy part is we just do dash r and give it the requirements.txt file that's inside the Redfish emulator. That is a listing of requirements, Python packages that are needed. Uh, so running that command, it'll go and grab all of those different Python modules and pull them down and get them installed. If you take a look at that requirements file, there's this, uh, a few uh, common Python third-party libraries that are, are used by the emulator. So now that we have that set up, I am again going to use uh, the virtual environment to run the Python executable and just tell it to run emulator.py. And running that, uh, it starts up the emulator. You can see here, uh, pretty quick, it um, tells you Redfish endpoint is at local host on port 5000. Uh, there's some various other output here for things getting set up, but that's it for getting the emulator running. Uh, we now are able to access that. Hopefully that looked pretty straightforward, but there is also another easier option if you have a bash command line available. This will work by default on macOS and Linux, uh, but if you're using Windows, you might already have bash either through the git bash command line or perhaps sigwin. So here, starting again with an empty directory, I'm just going to go to the Swordfish API emulator and grab the GitHub URL there and do a git clone using that. So the only thing I'm actually pulling down is the Swordfish API emulator. I didn't need to grab the Redfish one. And if I go into the Swordfish API emulator, there is a setup.sh file. And this is a script that will do all of those steps that we just went through manually. So all I have to do is run that file. That will pull down the Redfish emulator code for me. It'll copy those files over. It will get a Python virtual environment set up and it'll start up the emulator. So you can see it prints out here that we have that local host URL and when I'm done I can just press Control C to stop the emulator. Now you can see the output after I stop the emulator tells us how we can rerun it again. So you don't have to pull this source code down every time that you rerun it. So if I go up a level you can see the setup script um, we have our source code and it created this swordfish directory. So if I just go into that swordfish directory that has the, the full setup of the emulator. And then all I have to do is run that python emulator.py command again that was output from the setup script. And that will start up the emulator. So using that URL that's printed out, I can open up a web browser and it shows a very basic interface. Uh, has some links to the Redfish specification, but there's another link here to a, a user interface where we can click through and explore some of the objects and uh, get dig into some of the details of some of the properties. Once the emulator is running, it starts serving requests on that port 5000. Uh, like you saw, you can use the just a web browser to access that. Uh, but you, there are command line tools like curl and other REST API specific ones that make it fairly easy to perform git, post, and delete operations against that API. And most major browsers also have some sort of plugin store that you can search to find many different in integrations for performing these REST operations right from your browser. One other nice option is the basic web client available under the SNEA GitHub org that allows you to connect, explore, and perform various operations through a basic client interface. Uh, it's also a great place to explore if you're looking at ways of interacting with the API. A lot more detail about the Swordfish specification and schema and API details can be found on snea.org swordfish. The Redfish specification that Swordfish is built on top of also has similar information under dmtf.org redfish. Any questions or issues can be raised on swordfishforum.com.
I hope this walkthrough has helped to show the basics of getting the emulator up and running. If you encounter any issues or have any questions about using Redfish and Swordfish, please visit the swordfishforum.com website or join us at one of the upcoming SNE events to learn more and to be able to talk in more detail.